and I was always listening to my portable radio, uh, listening to classical music, and you know, I'd be walking down the streets of Detroit listening to classical music, and people thought I was nuts. This guy's crazy. But years later, when I decided that I wanted to be a neurosurgeon, well, I wanted to go to the place that's best known for neurosurgery, and that would be Johns Hopkins. But as I said before, they only took two people a year out of 125 applicants. But when I got an interview and I went there, the fellow who was in charge of the neurosurgery residency program, George B. Uvrahai, was also in charge of cultural affairs at the hospital. And uh, somehow the conversation turned to classical music. And we talked for over an hour about different composers and their styles, conductors, orchestras, orchestral halls. There was no way he wasn't taking me in the program because he had to have somebody to discuss these things with. But what I emphasize to young people all the time is there's no such thing as useless knowledge because you never know what doors it's going to open for you. And uh, the more you know, the more options you have. We cannot trace you know, the origins of a thought. We cannot define where imagination comes from. And I'm not sure we ever will. Because that exists in a different dimension. The brain is the conduit through which we reach that other dimension. But we have no way of quantifying and measuring it. But we do have the ability to enjoy it and to use it to the fullest extent. You know, the human brain, if you have an average brain, you're capable of almost anything because of the complexity of our brains. Billions and billions of neurons, hundreds of billions of interconnections. It can process more than two million bits of information in one second. It never forgets anything you've ever seen, anything you've ever heard. And, uh, you know, with something like that sitting up here, why would you ever utter the words, I can't?